Welcome to the third and last part of our discussion regarding reference ranges and conversion factors. For this time, we will be focusing more on hematology and the selected pediatric reference values. I suppose that you have come this far and you already have mastered the basics of hematology. But in order to give you a general idea and a brief recap, here is a short video from Macmillan Cancer Support. How blood cells are made. Inside our bones, a spongy material called bone marrow is constantly creating stem cells. All blood cells begin as stem cells, and as they divide, they develop into three different types of blood cells. These are red blood cells, white cells, and platelets. Each type of cell has a different job. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body. To do this, they use something called hemoglobin. This is what makes your blood red. If you don't have enough red blood cells circulating oxygen in your body, you become anemic. Anemia can make you feel tired and breathless, and you might look pale. White blood cells are part of our immune system, and they help fight off infection. If you don't have enough white cells, you're more likely to pick up an infection. Platelets help prevent bleeding and help blood to clot. When a wound is bleeding, platelets gather at the wound and help form a clot to stop the bleeding. If you don't have enough platelets in your blood, you'll bruise more easily and you might have bleeding gums, rashes and nosebleeds. Cancer treatments can affect all types of blood cells, and so regular blood tests are taken to check your blood count. Any problems can usually be treated easily. I also found this video from Academia de Ciencia, and this comes from Brazil. I found it very entertaining as well as easier to understand, so I hope you also enjoy the second video. The next video will tackle about the complete 
blood count or the CBC test by Alborg Medical Laboratories. Complete blood count, CBC test. This test is performed to determine your general health status, to screen for, diagnose, or monitor any one of a variety of diseases and conditions that affect blood cells, such as anemia, infection, inflammation, bleeding disorder, or cancer. CBC is a test that evaluates the cells that circulate in blood. Blood consists of three types of cells suspended in fluid called plasma, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. They all are produced and mature primarily in the bone marrow and are released into the bloodstream as needed. The sample required is a blood sample drawn from a vein in your arm or a finger stick or a heel stick for newborns. The results of a CBC can provide information about not only the number of cell types, but also can give an indication of the physical characteristics of some of the cells. Abnormal results can indicate the presence of one or more conditions. Typically, other additional tests are performed to help determine the cause of these abnormalities. Recent blood transfusions affect the results of the CBC. However, normal CBC values for babies and children are different from adults. A health practitioner will take these into consideration when interpreting data. Here is the normal result for both male and females for the complete blood count. Kindly compare the reading paraphernalia that I have provided you and compare it with the slide that I am currently flashing in the screen. For this next slide, kindly take a look at coagulation and hemostatic tests. Remember that in bleeding time, the typical result is around 2 to 8 minutes, but it actually depends on the location and orientation of the cut that you've made and on what particular device you are using. Same goes with the activated partial thromboplasin time test. It typically has 25 to 35 seconds as a normal result. However, it still depends on the type of activator and phospholipid reagents that you are using. Kindly take a look also at prothrombin time. The normal typical result is around 10 to 13 seconds. But again, take note that it actually depends on the thromboplastin reagent used during the performing of the procedure. Thrombin time as well has a normal typical result of 17 to 25 seconds, but it also depends on the concentration of thrombin reagent used. And for Westergren erythrocyte sedimentation rate, I have provided both men and women in their age range and the normal values. An erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR is a type of blood test that measures how quickly erythrocytes or your red blood cells settle at the bottom of a test tube that contains a blood sample. Normally, red blood cells settle relatively slowly. If you have a faster than normal rate, this may indicate inflammation in the body. Inflammation is part of your immune response system. It can be a reaction to an infection or injury. Inflammation may also be a sign of a chronic disease or an immune disorder or other medical condition. In the laboratory class, we usually take an ESR test to help determine if the patient has condition like arthritis, vasculitis, or inflammatory bowel disease. The ESR result is also used to monitor an existing condition. 
And here are the normal results for osmotic fragility test. If you can recall, an osmotic fragility test is a blood test which works to see if red blood cells have a tendency to break apart easily. There are two conditions that can cause this to happen, and that is thalassemia and hereditary spirocytosis. These two conditions cause the red blood cells to be more likely to break and become a smaller size. Just a brief recap, both thalassemia and hereditary spherocytosis may lead to hemolytic anemia. This is a type of anemia where you have a low count of red blood cells because your body is destroying them too fast. And the last topic for today is the selected pediatric reference values. Why do we say pediatric laboratory results are different? A blood test will always be a blood test, right? Of course it is. However, there are a lot of aspects of operating a pediatric lab that really are different from the way operations run in a lab whose clientele is mainly adults. Most people can think of the most obvious difference, age-related reference intervals. The concentration of various biomarkers in the body changes as an infant grows and develops into an adult. In some cases, there's not a lot of change in the biomarker. Same goes for a blood pH. Blood pH is pretty constant over the course of a person's life. Same with also electrocyte, uh, electrolytes. The reference intervals for this may be broader in infancy, but in general, they don't change a lot. However, some biomarkers change so drastically that normal levels in childhood would be mm, considered pathological in an adult. Without reference intervals tied to age or developmental state, these tests are not able to be properly interpreted. Like alkaline phosphatase during bone growth and steroid hormones during puberty are two of the best examples that I can give.
concepts are part three for reference ranges and conversion factors. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've learned something new from me today. God bless us all and keep safe always. Ah. Ah.